They wronged me. They marooned me on SETI Alpha 5. No, they didn't. They kicked you out of Starfleet because you decided to do something you weren't supposed to and you got caught and someone got killed. No, it was SETI Alpha 5. Dude, you're not Khan. No, I'm better. I'm Locarno. Oh my goodness. Hello and welcome to another episode of Trek Hammer, where today we're talking about Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 10. So last week I was a bit worried and really concerned that we weren't going to get a kick-ass ending because it felt like it was all set up, no payoff, and wasn't really going anywhere. Well, this week... We got something that was rather special. I actually really like this one. Yes, there are a lot of uh, references, and the ending is basically Wrath of Khan. Although, I have to admit, I did like seeing that little warning, the collision warning, where Mariner tries to go to warp, and it's the warning from Star Trek The Motion Picture, where they see the asteroid in the middle of the warp field. That was nice. That was a good reference. But it was the Wrath of Khan. It's basically the Wrath of Locarno. And... I'm a little concerned about that. This show is good. This show can do a lot of good stuff itself. We've seen in previous finales where the team comes together and solves problems in their own way and really shows off what Star Trek can do, especially in animated form. And then we have this where, I'm sorry, some parts of it were Arena from the original series. Some parts of it were Wrath of Khan from the original series. And it feels like it's not really embracing its own identity, it's retreading what we've already seen, which is a problem. You don't get credit, in my book, for copying what already worked and not doing your own version of it, not going that one step further and making it interesting in its own right for another take, essentially. So that's kind of my issue here. We also got a return to two more people doing the <laughs> Mark Twain thing, which was, no, I did, that was unexpected. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, we saw some interesting problem solving. We've also got a bit more character development with Tendi's family, and uh, that was good. But for the most part, it felt an awful lot like, let's do Wrath of Khan in a funny way, which... I'm not entirely impressed with. Overall, though, a good episode, fun episode, really seemed to have a, a quick, fast pace to it. I enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a firm 8.5 on the Warp Factor scale. Warp Factor 8.5, Mr. Sulu. And probably will enjoy watching it again because it felt pretty good. However, I, like I say, you can't get uh, points for retreading what worked before and not making something new out of it, which I don't feel it did. Locarno was an interesting bad guy, and I like the way that uh, it was resolved by, essentially, he undid it himself, the same way that he undid his own ambitions back in Next Generation. It was good to see Wesley Crusher back and... Uh, a nice reference with the voice actress who played um, Cito Jackson. That was her name. So I have trouble with names sometimes. So that was all good. And yeah, overall, it was pretty good. But still, only good enough to get an 8.5. It should have had a new way of doing things instead of just rehashing Wrath of Khan. That's all I've got for you. I'd like to hear what you think. Do you think I'm harsh here? Do you think I'm uh, on the money? Or do you think you've got a completely different take on it? I'd love to hear what you would like to say in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation about Star Trek. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching Track Hammer. And I'll see you tomorrow for a continuation of our full review of every episode of Star Trek from the beginning to the end. It's going to be a good one. It's the Menagerie. So take care and I'll see you tomorrow. Live long and prosper. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey 82 Mo Henry and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys.